chairman of the Vatican is here already, which will stay for us. The chairman of the today's event is here already. You are all welcome, and we thank God that he brought you here safely. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, at the risk of stating the obvious, I would like to remind us that the primary objective of the founders of APC was to build an enduring political party capable of sustaining responsive governance that can bring positive change in the circumstances of this country. Sadly, since forming government at the center and in many states across the Federation for the past seven and a half years, the objective of building a cohesive and varied political party has eluded the leadership of the party. This has not only limited the capability of government to deliver on the promises made to Nigerians, but has also created legitimate doubt on the sustainability of the party in the minds of the party members. The incapacity of the party to even harmonize and synergize the direction of the federal government with that of states it controls especially in key critical areas around which the campaigns were run, speaks volume about its incompetence. We have not been able to operate as a party as if the state governments, about 23 state governments and the federation are from the same political party. This is the current state of our party. And it is in this environment that we are gathered here must operate to produce Senator Ahmed Bola Tinubu as the party's flag bearer at the 2023 presidential election. And this we will do. We are determined to achieve this task, be it through consensus, indirect, or direct primaries, whichever method the party eventually adopts. We gathered here have the competence and capabilities to operate in any of these environments. But of course, being democrats that we are, we would have preferred a method that involves all the card-carrying members of the party in the process of choosing our presidential candidates. But our task, beginning from today, is to develop a smart strategic plan that will faithfully be executed to deliver Senator Ahmed Bola Tinubu as the candidate of APC and to thereafter deliver him in a landslide victory at the 2023 presidential election. In this, our task is cut out for us because our principal, Senator Ahmed Bola Tinubu, has no equal in terms of suitability and capacity to take over the governance of this country from President Muhammad Buhari on 29 May 2023. He is brilliant. He is tested in governance, and he is a decentralized Nigerian. He has no parallel in our party at this moment. He's also a proven, excellent manager of both capital and financial resources. He's done it in Lagos. As our people keep repeating, he's a man with a Midas touch in terms of finances. You look no further than how he skyrocketed the revenue of Lagos state government in the eight years he was governor, 
and how he has gone ahead to judiciously deploy that resources in a manner that nobody has been able to surpass. Ladies and gentlemen, let us therefore work tirelessly, faithfully, and earnestly to give our country, Nigeria, a bright, secure, and economically prosperous future where our people of every tribe, religion, and any vocation will feel free, secured, and loved. Senator Ahmed Bola Tunubu will lead us in the, into this future, and APC will be the pl platform of our preferred choice. God bless us all, even as I wish you journey blessings back to our very destination. I stand here today honored by the burden of expectations upon me and more tellingly strengthened by the convictions of the party with us in this journey to make history. We are brought together by a chorus of ideas and what defines us and sets us apart from other political groups is this collective realization that the future of this country rests on the choice of a unifying leader. A leader who panders to neither ethnic nor religious agenda. And one who isn't bound by toxic regional solidarity. And he is known for a track record of outstanding leadership. If you look around this country, in search of such a noble character, the count easily falls on the subject of this gathering, Ashwa Bola Ahmed Tim. So much has been said about this political enigma, and most of them by hearts with a poor sense of history. The path that led us to Ashwa didn't happen by chance. His propensity for sacrificing his comfort to save our democracy has been duly documented across time. When uncertainty loomed over the country during the military era, this was a man who disbursed his resources to fight for the return of this democracy. Even in exile, he provided sanctuaries for fleeing patriots who are still around to testify to his large heart. Martin Luther King said, the ultimate measure of a man is not why he stands at times of comfort and convenience, but why he stands at times of comfort and controversy. <laughs> Our younger compatriots must be in the know of Tinibu's memories from two decades past. When he was a backbone, of the opposition and fiercely antagonized and politically ostracized by the then ruling party, the People's Democratic Party. He even built the economic foundations of the modern Lagos state at the time the state was isolated by a vindictive federal government. At the time he assumed the mantle of leadership in Lagos, the monthly IGR of Lagos here was 600 million naira as can be attested to. In the first quarter of 2021, Lagos generated 128 billion naira as internally generated revenue. And it is pertinent to mention that Lagos is the third largest economy in Africa. While Tinibu's contemporaries were trading their principles for a place at the table in Abuja, during President Olus Shegun of Asenjo's era, and throwing their political allies under the bus, he took the risk to build a political alternative to the ruling party. And his choices of candidates underline his political credentials. He became and has remained a dependable sanctuary of victims of political witch hunts. In 2007, he offered his political structure under the Action Congress. 
to the elder statesman, Waziri Adama, Vice President Atiku Abubakar, to run for president under the AC banner. Four years later, he made this structure available to my brother, Madam Nuhuri Bani, of the EFCCPM. And this foresight of the Jagaban Borgu will also set the tone of the 2015 general elections. His place as a fulcrum of the All Progressive Congress reasserted his essence, and we all owe him a debt of gratitude and deserve loyalty for, prior, for, for, for prioritizing principles over personal gain. In 2015, some candidates with very huge war chests were itching to clinch the ticket of the APC, like the Rock of Gibraltar, Ashwaju, and his progressive team stood solidly behind the candidature of President Muhammad Buhari. <laughs> My simple question, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, where were the members, the new members of what I call the Buhari's Church of Later Day Saints? Why were they? We knew where their political loyalty lies at that particular convention when President Muhammadu Buhari emerged as the presidential candidate of the APC. Why were they? And some people say anything goes in politics. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, not everything goes in politics. We shall have minimal thresholds below which we won't operate. And the irreducible minimum is that after eight years of presidency in the North, the logic, common sense, equity, justice, and fairness demand that power should move to the southern part of the country. And who is better qualified? Ashwajibola and Mitinibu should be given the choice of face refusal. More than any other person, he has sacrificed more for this democracy, for the APC, and for the continuity of the Buhari legacy, for the consolidation of the Buhari legacy. He is an essential part of that equation. Ashwaji's choices and endorsements of Northerners. I am a Northerner. Senator Abu Ibrahim is from the north. Pastor Babachir David Lawan is from the north. Over time, Ashwaji's choices and endorsements of Northerners as presidential candidates, while others were masterminding ethno regional solidarity and fueling socio cultural affinities, readily affirmed to his pan Nigerian profile, where others see divisions to exploit. He sees collaboration. Where others chase an easy route to power. He reminds you of Jeffrey Soldier's immortal wisdom that patience is a conquering virtue. And it is this patience that brought, brought us together here to remember the examples he has set and the debt we owe you. We owe him. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the mudslinging that has trailed Asiwaju since his presidential took his presidential bid took the top spot in the country is a mere acknowledgement of his political track record and inimitable influence on our political scene. The attempts at weaving ridiculous fiction to override the history we have all witnessed demonstrate the detractors utter desperation and cowardice. One of such is the fix, mischievous fixation on his age and the wild conclusion that he is physically unsuitable for the office of the president. This obsession characterizes the thinking of those who have no understanding of Ashwaju's incredible work ethic. 
a few days ago, I joined him on a trip to Zampara State to condole with the good people and government of Zampara and identify with their realities and the experience made a nonsense of this propaganda that is anti turan Nigeria. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, on the eve of this trip, I assure you, I retired at 6 a.m. after Sufi prayers. And I was already awake and attending to guests by 11 a.m. We departed for Sokoto by around 2 p.m. and had to traverse the menacing hinterland of that part of the Northwest for seven hours from Sokoto to Guso, where he made a generous donation of 50 million naira, as he had in other places shocked by tragedy in Borno and in some other other states of the Federation. And then we came back to Sokoto. We returned back to Abuja by midnight. But then his schedule was entirely a series of meetings that kept him awake until 3 a.m. Now excuse my curiosity, how many of us here can match or endure such a demanding schedule? Ashura Jews, alacrity, therefore, has never been a subject of skepticism for those who have worked with him. And even his critics are aware of this. If you were half the man in their tails by moonlight, we would have long succeeded in subduing him. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the mark of true leadership isn't the ability to live a backward sentence. It's the mental effort to think rationally of solutions designed to redeem one's people and territorial jurisdictions. This was why leaders like Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the 32nd President of the United States, stood out. Roosevelt took power in a country wrecked by the Great Depression of the 1930s and guided its economy through the Second World War. And the quality of his thoughts and ideas made the United States a superpower under his watch. Similarly, the accident that had Kenya's Muay Kibaki confined to a wheelchair didn't disable his ability to produce sound ideas, and Kenyans were sold on his virtue, and they chose him as their president over what some would consider a fitter option. There is the case of Abdul Wahabu Teplika in Algeria. I can mention so many names of leaders that performed excellently, including the current president of the United States of America, who became the president of America at the age of 78. I'm not asking you to don't dare to turn down critical assessments of your future leaders, but we direct you to see the bigger picture. We are not here to prepare for the Olympics, but an institution that relies on the superiority of ideas to strive. Ashwaju's credentials aren't only appealing. They are proof of the qualities this country needs to redeem its vast potentials and possibilities. We are here. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, to testify to this power of ideas. As the largest economy in sub Saharan Africa, and kept the opposition alive when it was more profitable to sell out. Those who seek to make us go low hope to present the presidency as a brick laying exercise. But that's the work of a machine created by an idea. And who else to guide us towards manufacturing? the best ideas to redeem this country better than Ashwa Dibola and Mekinu. <laughs> to derail us at this point is a futile ambition. The conversations we are prepared for and pedestrian obsessions will be mundane. But comparisons of ideas and track records of service to the nation. At the top of our expectations from Nigeria's next president, to be mastery of the dynamics of the modern economy. Testify leadership skills and competence and very significantly sensitivity to the complexities of the Nigerian sociology. Powers to reflect on this man, we are here to celebrate. And what you see is a tested, accomplished, 
and large hearted leader who has invested his resources in building an extensive network of political minkis who have risen to the peak of their career. He's a leader of leaders, a mentor who has mentored some of the best hands in this country. From our erudite Vice President, Vice President Kofi Pandi, to Baba Tunde Raji Kashola, our lawyer who was turned into an engineer in the Federal Ministry of Works, from Ralph Arek Keshola, from Mamora, and of course seated here is James Paneki. From Lai Moment, to Richard Adini Adibayo, and to my friend, the governor of Equity State, James Karebe Payo, JFK. These were all his members of his team, the Ashwaju team, that have excelled and continue to excel. And he's one leader with the likeness of heart to embrace all tendencies. This is a Muslim married to a pastor of the Redeemed Christian Church. He has that likeness of heart. And he has the capacity to forgive and embrace recalcitrant sons that have returned back to death. A lot of his political children have returned back to his camp, and he has embraced them, empowered them, and made them have a sense of belonging. But in politics, of course, the comes with nothing to say always choose the much. We are not going to take the bet. We are going to keep them talking and building with irrefutable records of assured you's suitability to lead this country to the promised land. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. For those who have been in the system for long, understand that some character's loyalty has a thing in common with a chameleon. What we promise, however, is to make sure that all Nigerians are presented with the side of the Jagaban Borgu, other than the fiction and half-truth and innuendos and lies from political desperados clinging to the region of a shrinking ship. This is why we are here, to build and mobilize a network of believers and volunteers at the grassroots to help us deliver the Nigeria of our dreams. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this is a challenge for all of us, a generational challenge. The trajectory of global growth is facing Africa. The Asian tigers have matured. Taiwan, Malaysia, Singapore. And Nigeria will make Omar that trajectory, 220 million black people, with some of the smartest people on earth. Ali Mosbui described the Igbos as the Nigerian Jews, geographically mobile, economically enterprising, and educationally ambitious. The Yorubas of the Southwest are certainly the most educated and the richest of the black race. The most hated and vilified Hausas, believe me, no part of the nation, of our nation is complete without the Hausamas. They symbolize hard work and solution. Ladies and gentlemen, let us make this country work. Let us root for a person who has the capacity. As I said earlier, the presidency is not a brief laying exercise. And the president that we should have in 2023 must have three or four essential qualities. One, the president of Nigeria in 2023 should have excellent economic management capabilities. 
someone who will not dispense our useful time and energy for unnecessary recriminations and vendetta, but somebody who will build on the achievements of President Muhammad Bukhari. What are the areas where we have challenges and have a better Nigeria? The second quality of a Nigeria, of a Nigerian president in 2023, must be a leader who understands the complexity of the Nigerian nation and must have the capacity to be all inclusive in forging the road ahead. And lastly, and most importantly, the president of Nigeria in 2023 should have the compassion and the courage not only to forgive, but to embrace. Because if Nigeria fails, the black man has failed. I raise my head and I thank you. I haven't listened to the previous uh, speakers and uh, capping it off with uh, the speech we've just heard from uh, distinguished Senator Kashim Shatima, I would not want to dilute those speeches and specifically his. Uh, I will prefer that uh, we'll continue to enjoy and uh, uh, remind ourselves of the things he said here and put a lot of uh, the wisdom we've uh, garnered from the three speakers in our bags and take to our various homes as uh, lessons. But uh, maybe I can just add one or two uh, uh, issues here. One, of course, uh, this is a gathering of uh, delegates uh, from over 2,500 support groups of Aswaju, Bola, Tinebu. 2,500 because we've worked day and night to also streamline the groups and be sure that the 2,500 delegates are all rooted from uh, the national level to the state level to the local government to the wards and of course the units. So this is purely a gathering of uh, delegates nominated by these supporter uh, groups. The details of which we are going to communicate on uh, the new structure of course, for obvious reasons, you know, we are not going to make it public. In our executive session, we'll pass all this information to you, how uh, we'll continue to manage ourselves and operate top, bottom, bottom, top, until when uh, campaign uh, commences. Uh, I think something is very important. One, we must continue to support President Muhammadu. We must continue. All of us support President Bahari, but we've gotten to a critical point where we are even supposed to double our support for this government to ensure that all of the good intention that he has for this country and all the good policies that are being implemented are uh, being implemented to logical conclusion until he finishes his term. So I'm calling on all of us, support groups spread across the country. We are millions and millions and millions in numbers supporting Aswaju Bola Tinebu to also to continue to focus. I know we're doing it, but we must be very conscious of that and continue to put in our best to see that we continue to support our Baba Muhammad Buhari. Secondly, it is important by the time we leave today as the chairman mentioned, campaign has not started. This is not campaign council. And we've tried to explain that over and over again so that we're not accused of starting campaign when campaign has not commences. These are all pre preliminary preparatory activities in our own foresight to continue to organize the support groups for easy management and to be able to achieve the objectives that we've set out uh, to achieve. But again, what you can do now when we all go back to our constituencies is to continue our aggressive political mobilization based on volunteering. We must continue to recruit people. Let's not just assume we've had enough. Let's continue to recruit people. At the state level, recruit more people. At the local government level, recruit more, uh, more people. 
at the world level recruit more people, then the most important electoral unit at the unit level, massive, aggressive recruitment, and let's keep these people in the kitty. It is going to come handy. Whether it is the direct primaries or the indirect primaries that is adopted, support groups are key. If it is, if it is the direct primaries, you are the voters. I don't see how anybody can defeat us in an election. And if it is indirect primaries where delegates are going to vote, these delegates are not going to drop from heaven. These delegates are your neighbors. They are your relatives. They are your brothers. They are your sisters. They are your mothers. They are your uncles. So if it is indirect primaries, if we have our members of the support groups, of course it's an automatic vote. If we do not have, the support groups will play a key role in going door to door, house to house, to campaign on these delegates. Of course, every delegate, when he knows that if he turns to the right of his house, he's an Aswaju, left is Aswaju, front is Aswaju, back is Aswaju. When he comes to Abuja, he knows that it is Aswaju he's going to do. So, I will conclude with these few uh, words. 2023, it's about our future. It's about the future of this country. We cannot toy with it. Previous government, and of course the previous government, the present government, have done their very best. But again, we can't take chances. We want the best hand. Yes, within the APC, we've said repeatedly, we have very good hands. We have very, very good and competent and qualified people that can be president. But we have someone that has an edge. And beyond having an edge, we want someone that combines the competence, the qualification, and the capacity to win the election. And who has that qualification? Who has the whole of that all combined? Who has it? I want you to say it in such a way and a manner that wherever Bola Aswaju is at this moment, he will hear you. Who has the competence, the qualification, and the capacity to win the election? Who has it? Who has it? God bless you all. May God bless you all. We look forward to continue to, to work together until when the campaign starts and the fireworks commence. Thank you so much. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Uh, I don't know where to begin. Uh, my political mentor, Engineer Bidi Lawal, earlier spoke here, so I don't know what to add about his speech. Uh, a distinguished, distinguished, for distinguished Senator Abu Ibrahim, chair this place. I'm highly privileged to be here. Uh, distinguished Senator Kashim Setima, who in the recent past, Within the fora of political scientists in Nigeria, which I have the honor of being one, uh, is now Christian as the architect of discovering government and new governance in Nigeria by propping up uh, Governor Zulum in Borno State. Uh, Nigerians are celebrating Zulum Political Science Forum is celebrating Kashim Setima. Uh, before I start my presentation, uh, I want to at least give a brief history of how I became an Asiwajus or a Jagaban. 
It started about five years ago when a primary school friend of mine, Tyrone Mandito, came to my house and sold the idea to me. And, uh, and incidentally today, he is the national coordinator of Northern Region uh, support for Tinibu. Uh, also, a friend of mine, a pro Professor M.T. Usman also, four years ago, invited us to see the way forward for Nigeria in 2023. And he dropped the idea of Tinibu to us. Uh, Bidi Lawan has been the church bearer I'm a professor of political science, but I'm a student of politics under Didi Lawan. So he has been a touch bearer for Tinubu as far as I am concerned, both in Abuja and in Adamawa, of which I have the singular honor of being a, a member and a follower. And most importantly, uh, my student, Abdul Muni, he started as a student later got promoted and projected into being my colleague as a lecturer, and today he is my leader. Because he became a leader because he was a threat of poverty in the academia and went for greener pastures in politics. So I have to, I love my heart at all these people that I mentioned for making me a Jagaban. My duty this afternoon is to share ideas or opinions on the imperative of grassroots mobilization. By Allah, I'm not going to do that one. A lot of people have, have done it in the past. The chairman of the equation, Engineer Bidi Lawal, Kashim Setima said it certainly. So what I'm going to say uh, is just to address those who travel from afar to come here and do solidarity with us. I'm going to do it within the context of idea generation, idea applications, and idea appropriation, as far as the tax ahead of us in 2023 is concerned. I have a quotation. How I wish um, there's a projector to project it, but I will read it. When I came across this quotation about 11 years ago, I was looking for a Nigerian that I can now place this quotation upon him or her. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I had to stay for 11 years when I was asked to come and present this paper. Now I dusted my old files and brought it up. And there is nobody that this quotation of Robert G. Ingersoll addresses succinctly and absolutely than Jagaba of Nigerian politics, Bola Ahmed Tinibu. Please pardon me to friend to run through these few lines. It's, it's an icebreaker. I use it as an icebreaker. It says, and I, I read, I have made up my mind to say my say. That's what Ingersoll said, almost 40 something years back. Uh, 400 years back, not 40 something, pardon me. I have made up my mind to say my say. I shall do it kindly, distinctly, but I'm going to do it. I know there are thousands or millions of men who substantially agree with me, but who are not in a condition to express their thoughts. They are poor, they are in business, and they know that should they tell their honest thoughts, persons will refuse to patronize them in governance, in business, and you don't have the luxury of speaking from two sides of your mouth. So I speak this from these three issues. What are the issues of grassroots mobilization? What are the challenges of grassroots mobilization? And what are the realities of grassroots mobilization? As far as how I wish we have started campaign so that we can now contextualize this thing in the character, in the personality, and in the integration uh, uh, system of Bola Chinebu. But what are the issues? There are about eight issues. Nigerians are politically tired. That is the truth of the matter. Nigerians, we are politically tired. If you look at every person, every Nigerian, there is 
stress. And we are democratically despondent. We came a long way. We have withered the storm. Yet, the El Dorado is still far away. We are like orphan politically and democratically. And unfortunately, there are two most vibrant political parties in Nigeria, the APC and the PDP. What's so much about them? As an issue, both APC and PDP are dancing naked in the arena of self-delusion, especially when it's defined from candidate selection process. The PDP is almost dead. The APC is almost dying because there are characters and there are hangers on, democratic, democratic hangers on. Or if I may use Kashin Shetima's word, desperado. Who thinks that the Nigerian presidency is for political actions and never do good as? So this is a challenge to the parties. Number three, election processes and results do not engender confidence and hopes in an average Nigeria. Number four, as an issue, is dwindling fortunes in both aspirants and candidate options. If truth shall be told by Allah, if candidate selection process, if aspirations of a person within a political party is built on the performance and the success of a candidate, certainly in APC, we should go home to a, it should be dollar Tinubu. But unfortunately, in Nigeria, the truth doesn't hold. So, there is a dwindling fortune. And I'm, this, some of these issues are from, I, I picked them from IGEA, International Institute for Democracy and Electoral Assistance in South Africa. Some I picked them from Yaga, it's a Nigerian international NGO. Some are product of Social Science Academy of Nigeria. And the fourth sort of everything in this paper is Center for Political Research education and development, which I, singular, I have the singular honor of being the executive director uh, for the, in the last four years. Fluid and watery party membership, negative or near absence of mentoring in Nigeria. The greatest challenge, and I, with all the respect to our dear President Muhammadu Buhari, he, according to an international agency, he scored less than 30% in mentoring. I felt bad in Sweden when I was at the international conference. He is a man of honesty, integrity, valor, whatever. But in terms of mentoring, he scored 22%. Bola Tinubu, who is not a president, scored 73%. In Uppsala, Sweden, when we met underneath Netherlands Institute of Multiparty Democracy, two Review Nigeria's journey so far from 20, 1999 to 2023. So how many politicians in Nigeria can beat their chest and say they mentored A, B, C, D, and those mentees can, have, have, have also mentored A, B, C, D. There are very few in Nigeria. Bola and Tinibu is one of the privileged and rare few. <laughs> Avalanche of political opportunists and democratic hangers on. The moment Jagaban expresses desire to, to aspire for the presidency, there are political actions whose stock in threat is to just throw towel into any ring, democratic ring, and they all came up. And I like the, 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 the Senator Shetima asked, where were they when Jagaban was now being trampled upon by the jackboot of the military. The first, the most important dictator I ever respected in my life is Abacha. I'm very sorry to say that. Abacha is my model and my mentor in leadership. So he, I was arrested and tortured severely under his government, but I still respect Abacha. That's why last year, 25th September, I organized Abacha Day at the Transcorp Hotel. So, Tinibu, Bol, eyeball to eyeball, oppose Abacha. And all those who are now making noise in Nigeria, I don't want to call names. It's a shame. I, I, I want to confirm what Senator Shetima said. 
He provided sanctuary for them in his house in London. If you go there as a day, you'll find them, some sleeping on the carpet. He fed them, clothed them, give them money for whatever. And now there are the people down coming to APC to come to contest with him. Where were they when this was happening? And since 1999 up to today, no Nigeria, not even a chief of Boga, my elder brother from Adam Hussein, can now challenge Jagaba in terms of mentoring and in terms of bridge building across Nigeria. But against all these things, against all these things, the last, if you read the, uh, the Uppsala report on Nigeria, I picked this last issue from it. They said, despite all these problems of no mentoring, of no single political party, of no this, of no that, they said, there is hope in any alternative platform in Nigeria. So the only alternative platform we have today is Bola Ahmed Tinubu. And I make bold to pronounce the people that are in this hall, Wallahi, they are the best form of Nigeria and they are the best Tinubu can ever bank his confidence on. And we can do it. It's a hope for Tinubu. Then the next one is challenges. You see, when you go outside to mobilize, and if you go into Democratic Party's website, America, and if you go to, or even Barack Obama's uh, uh, this thing, you find that the greatest challenge, you see, we think that Americans are highly educated. Yes, maybe they are literate, they are certificated. But political education is very important. To mobilize at grassroots level needs a separate knowledge, a different knowledge, not knowledge of university or scandal school, uh -uh. political education. First and foremost, you must equip yourself with the knowledge you are of it. The greatest problem why we have challenges in our democracy is that political parties don't educate their members with political knowledge. No effective political education, no political enlightenment, and no political information. So how do you mobilize? So the first challenge is lack of political education. We need it in this Tinubu uh, 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 support group. Political exclusion. Everybody is excluded. Look, would that being immodest. Bola Tinubu served as the most inclusive political platform in the history of democracy in Nigeria. In terms of Nigerian factors, tribalism, tri religion, sectionalism, ethnicity, he was able to at least destroy all these differences. And everybody that is in his own group has supposed to at least imbibe this particular culture and behavior. So if you are going into mobilization, you should be a, a, rep a, a, a replica, a representation, and a reflection of Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Weak party structure is very strange, because I'm speaking as a political scientist. As strong as APC is, it has a bit weak party structure. That's the truth of the matter. If you are a lover of APC, I'm very sorry for you. I don't mean to harm APC but there is weak party structure. So don't, if you are go, don't compete with the political party, but assist the party in mobilizing if Tinubu becomes the flag bearer. Absence of Democrats, poor political culture, we don't have rich political culture, immature and biased media, the media, you have a long way to go. Yes, politically, you, an average journalist in Nigeria lacks political education. Let them go and learn. Gullible citizenry and unpatriotic elites. These are the challenges we have. Then, imperative of mobilization. It helps in political recruitment. The, every person you mobilize today, you are sure that you have his vote or her vote on election day. That is the target. Enhance party membership. It deepens party membership and enhance party structure. Ensure campaigns voluntarily. That is easy. You see, in Nigeria, I don't think we understand what is voluntary. If you go to South Africa, if you go to Kenya, if you go to Algeria, if you go to Ghana, 
and Botswana. These are the five African countries that where volunteering has been institutionalized. When they say a volunteer, they don't expect anything from the party, they don't expect anything from the candidate. They do it voluntarily. How many of us in this hall can be there and say that we are on the same page with these people in South Africa, in Kenya, in Ghana, in Algeria, and in Botswana? So if you're going to work for Bola Tinibu support group as a volunteer, look, it's a national sacrifice, it's a personal sacrifice, and it's a nation building process for you. You may benefit from it. Bola did not benefit from it at the beginning. It took him years to become governor of Lagos, and it took him years to aspire to become president of Nigeria. So we should follow that pattern. Enrich campaigns and electioneering, promote and project candidates, and it helps in, 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 in creating party leadership. Then finally, realities. Because I was asked to work, uh, say, uh, present within some time limits. You see, they, they, there are a lot of issues that serve as realities for us in this uh, uh, observer. So it's, it's quite uh, uh, encouraging. Stakeholder constituency. There are people in Nigeria that believe that Nigeria belongs to them. And they will do everything post humanly possible to thwart your effort in this exercise. So you have to be very, very careful. They are stakeholders in democracy. They are political actors, but they are evil. So you have to be very, very careful. Electoral act politics, please. The management committee should create avenues whereby all our members, 2,500 subgroups, uh, sub, uh, are taught about electoral act. They should be educated on the importance of this electoral act. Unreadiness of political parties. A lot of parties are not ready for this 2023. Presidential dreamers, we have already seen them. And somebody, it, it, I was asked on Friday by a television, I was interviewed by a television crew on Friday, and they said, what is my stake on Osibanjo's candidature? I said, I don't have any stake. Osibanjo is the working stick of Bola Tinibu. That's it. As simple as this. So there are presidential dreamers, and I don't believe with his exposure as a professor in law, with a vice president for eight years, with this, with that, he will become a dreamer. Deceptive and pretentious volunteers. That's why the committee must be very careful. There are malls. They will, give, they will send people to work within you. And finally, reluctant and unwilling voters. You should go for them. See, the last one, the last page is food for thought for all of us. And before I go for the food of, for thought, I want to expand the list of Senator Shetima, who feel that Bonatidibu is too old. I have been a visiting scholar in Chinese Academy of Social Sciences for 11 years. And while there, I read the Chinese Maoist and Deng Zhao Ping's political doctrines. I realized that for six years, Mao ruled China on his sick bed. Not on wheelchair, not with walking stick crutches. He ruled China from 1960 to April 1966 on his sick bed. And that, look at what China is today. Mahathir Muhammad, you all know, he was forced out of political retirement and became the president of Malaysia at the age of what? 90. Mandela was moved out of prison, very fragile, very old. He was posted as South African president to bring what? Stability, continuity, and prosperity. The students of Cuba history, Castro, you know, the last time Castro says, I am tired, they say, this is your own soul whispering to you, leader. We as citizens, we know that we are very strong. Carry on. There are examples, examples upon examples. So those who are saying that Bola Tinubu is old, there is wisdom in all age. I even prefer that he is old now because he has nothing to covet for in this world again, apart from service to mankind. He can steal money. He can add more wives. 
Yes. So give it to him. Food for thought. And I'm warning, look, let me tell you. I'm speaking on behalf, this statement is not from the management committee. It's from Center for Political Research, Education and Development. It's a, it's a center that has 148 professors that will organize a bachelor day last 25th September. I represent them here, and I'm speaking on their behalf. The management committee of this Tinubu should, make, should be very, very careful that there is no compromise. And do you know why? According to Ahmed Kalantri, he said, compromise brings harmony to both parties, both to Bola Tinubu and those who, are, who want to derail him at inside the APC. But you can be, according to Kalantri, you can be rest assured that it can bring harmony to both parties, but happiness to none. None of them will be happy. So Tinubu should not compromise. The only compromise Tinubu has in 2023 is to get the ticket of APC. <laughs> then lastly, lastly, William Uri, he said, let me read it. And it's all about negotiating, negotiation, and the rest within the APC before the, uh, the primaries. And I want the campaign organization to be very careful about that. The power of a positive no, because as far as we are concerned, Tinubu's anything less than the ticket, the candidature, is no to us. The power of positive no describes how to say no when it is vital to stand up and protect your core interests and values. It is not just about how to say no, however, but about how to do so in a respectful and constructive manner that can potentially lead to agreement. And that is the clincher. As its subtitle indicates, it is about how to say no and still get to yes at the end of the day. So, thank you for the opportunity, and may Allah make Tinibu president of Nigeria come 2023.